What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another Street Fighter Duel video. And guys, today I want to cover something else in the training section and that is going to be the Fighting Heart. Now a lot of you don't know what this is if you're brand new, but we're going to explain it all from top to bottom and talk to you guys about how to earn the tokens in order to actually uh, level it up, how to get additional uh, orbs in order to continue leveling your Fighting Heart, how the stats work, and what you want to focus on first, second, third, and fourth, all right? <clears throat> so the Fighting Heart is actually something that you will unlock as you play the game. If you click the little uh, section over here, this is how it works. So the Fighting Heart itself is going to be right here, this little cube, okay? Uh, and essentially, each A-grade fighter gains awakening conv uh, conviction upon obtaining or advancing to a new grade for the first time. So every time you go from uh, A to A+, plus, uh, to S, to S+, plus, to S, S+, plus, or sorry, S, 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 S+, plus, and then triple S, and then triple S plus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you'll gain yourself up to 24, I believe, or 28 is the max, of these uh, things called convictions, okay? And these convictions will actually be these orbs down here, and every 24 of them, you can actually level up your fighting heart. Now, once you awaken the conviction, you raise the level of the heart, the stats of the fighting heart are used for all the fighters. So all of these bonus stats you see here, guys, will apply towards your fighters, and it's, it applies to every single one of them, all right? Now, there is also a separate section. Once you level up to heart enough times, you'll unlock something called Exclusive Fighting Heart. Once Fighting Heart has reached level 15 specifically, and Chapter 8 of Progression has been cleared, Exclusive Fighting Heart representing different fighting classes will be unlocked, and we'll go through each one of those shortly. Exclusive Fighting Hearts can be used to upgrade, can be used to be upgraded by Faith Gems and stats for the corresponding class. All right, so Faith Gems, guys, are up here. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys in terms of how to get these, okay? So first off, we talked about the conviction, right? These are these right here, these orbs, Awakening Convictions. As soon as you upgrade your characters, you'll get these. This only affects the actual Fighting Heart itself. And again, these stats will apply to all characters, no matter what class they are. Uh, but the Faith Gems, on the other hand, are specifically going to be class-based. And it's your choice how you want to level and who you want to level. Now, each of these uh, exclusive Fighting Hearts will have... Uh, dedicated skills and passives and actives for each of these classes. So let's start and go through all of them. Okay, so this one here is Fighting Heart Conqueror. Strengthens all attack, <clears throat> all attack fighters. Okay, and I'll show you here who gets affected by these. All right, these are obviously the sea level ones. You don't want to worry about these, but these are the units here that are affected by this. Now, as you can see here, as you level it up, the stats go up specifically for these units right there and this class. And this is what the traits are. So the first trait is going to be called One Fell Swoop. After performing a super combo or a combo, the fighter gains 8% increased combo damage for 7 seconds. Now that increases the power by the next level, power by the next level, power by the next level, and then power, 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 power. As you can see here, it goes quite a bit to level 10. It will take you an obscene amount of time to get here, guys, so don't try to aim for that, alright? The second skill is going to be called Last Stand. When HP drops below 30% for the first time, obtain a shield which absorbs damage equal to 75% of the fighter's attack for 6 seconds. This is a great survival tactic. So this will apply and the shield will increase in terms of, sorry, the shield, uh, yeah, the shield will increase based on your damage attack. As you can see, it goes to 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, all the way up to 120%. So a more of a survival tactic, hence why the name is Last Stand. All right, Unstoppable. Gains a 10% damage bonus for 5 seconds after triggering a critical trigger critical hit. Uh, trigger's interval is 12 seconds. Like you see here, the damage increases every single time. The trigger uh, interval never decreases, so keep that in mind. But every time you commit a crit, you gain quite a bit of a damage bonus. So this is a great one to focus on first because some of the main units for damage dealing are in here. For example, Bison, Guile, Sea Viper, Dalsim, uh, Emery, which a lot of people are still fairly fond of and even combat guile so these units are fairly good units some of these are top tier units guys so this is one of the first ones i focused on and i believe i believe i'm speculating please don't take this to heart just a speculation that akuma will also sit in this lineup too hence why i focus to get it to 30 ahead of time right now i will point this out you can reset your points by spending 300 diamonds so not the end of the world guys if you make a mistake and you need to reset all right let's go over to the support one now this one is called shelter because right, as you can see here all the support units are sitting in here and these are the ones that will be affected same scenario you get the bonus stats if you level it up and then we're going to talk about the skills alive and thriving when an active skill is unleashed heals the allied target with the lowest hp percentage by 50 percent of the fighter's attack all right and this can be triggered every 15 seconds 
when an active skill is unleashed, it will increase to 50 to 53%. This can go all the way up to 77%. So again, not a bad off heal, guys, especially if you're using uh, like Fashion Sakura or Rose who aren't the best healers but are the best support in the game. Um, so they will do additional healing at least by a little bit based on this. All right, the second skill, Tactical Maneuvering. When taking damage, reduces the attacker's damage bonus by 12% for 5 seconds, triggers every 15 seconds. This is actually pretty damn good, guys, um, because it reduces the amount of damage you take and the amount of damage the opponent that hits you actually dishes out to the rest of the team as well, and that can go up to 18.75%. So a good little debuff on the opponent whenever you take damage. Burning Rage. Fills the super gauge by 150 when the fighter gets knocked out. So whenever the support is knocked out, you get a super combo gauge. Not you know, not the biggest increase to be quite honest, but as you get further up, it does go quite a bit more. Um, ideally, you don't want your support dying, but it's inevitable. So not a bad one. I'm really stopping at 25 for now just to see how uh, how I, how the rest of them fare off first. But right now, I'm not really focusing on getting this into 30. So I'd get this maybe to 25 just for the debuff and the little extra heal, but don't really go further than that. I don't think it's gonna be required because you can already get quite a bit of super gauge from uh, your fast cast uh, so fighting soul and other, other ways, right? So that one I'm gonna hold off on 25. So definitely here 30, 25, moving on to the assassin. Fighting Heart Vicious, you can see here, a lot of the biggest damage dealers in the game, Kami, uh, Jury, Gen, uh, Chun-Li are all here, right? Uh, not take away from Guy, I haven't tested him. I really like his kit, but I haven't tested him yet. I'm sure he's going to be great. Uh, unfortunately, Yun and Yang are not the greatest. The Capri's okay. I mean, she's not bad. But nonetheless, you've got the best damage dealers in the game sitting in this lineup. So you do want to focus on this one especially. So the first skill is Malicious Injury. When dealing damage to a target below 50% HP, additionally cause damage equal to 40% of the attack. So just an extra little bit of an attack in there to cause damage and you can go all the way up to 60% of that attack so not a bad little extra bonus it does happen every 10 seconds you're just kind of putting a little jab inside your original attacks anyways so not too shabby um, of, a, of a skill the second one up here is dance of knives increases dodge by 15% for 8 seconds when HP drops below 50% now this is actually fairly important believe it or not guys your tank sometimes uh, will die uh, but your bisons will sometimes, you know, well, bison won't die because he's got to be the last one up. But, um, but like your MH Kens and stuff will die. And it's always nice to have your assassin survive because they're the best damage dealers. So if they can dodge and avoid attacks and continue dishing out damage, they can sometimes take out a whole team by themselves. And I've seen it happen with Jury, seen it happen with Gen. Uh, there have been a lot of different scenarios where those guys have taken out entire teams by themselves when my second team, for example, if they're on, have all died. So a pretty damn good skill. And it also stacks with the existing dodge skills that they may already have, all right? And then moving on to Battering Ram. When an enemy is knocked out, the fighter gains 10% crit rate and 20% or 20 speed, which is really, really good. Now, the speed and the crit will continue to rise per level to pretty substantial amounts, so 15% 15, 15 crit and 30 uh, speed. So this is one that you definitely want to get up, especially for your damage-dealing assassins. All right, so this is another one I would definitely focus on to getting to 30. All right, moving on to Fighting Heart Harmonious. Now, this, this one here is interesting because balanced characters are weird to me. I like, like, B. Zangief obviously is one of the best characters in the game. Blank is actually incredible. Uh, and as is M.H. Ken, we know this already, I've done the review on him. But the rest of them are somewhat mediocre. So, um, I've, I've got the 25 just because M.H. Ken. I might push the 30 because I love him as a unit. But if you don't have M.H. Ken and you only have B. Zang, I think, t like, getting to 2 is 25 is enough. Let's go through the skills. Alright, so, uh, Eviscerating Knife. When dealing damage, reduce the target's damage reduction by 8% 8, 8 for 5 seconds. Now, this is actually kind of cool because uh, you can stack this, for example, with Bizangi's vehicle, which does, I think, like 80% more damage if you do the wild spin on him. This will actually work as well, too. For 5 seconds, you can increase that 80% to like 85% or 88% and then further up as you go further, right? So, this is actually a really good one to debuff the opponent um, and, and do more damage to that opponent. Uh, the second skill is Blood Blades. When losing 35% of HP, uh, cumulatively increases life steal rate by 10%. So a little bit of survival. I mean, honestly, the amount is so small. The 10% is useless for most. For the most part, you're going to see insignificant numbers come back to you for health. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, not the greatest, but it is what it is. But we really want to move over to this one. Grand Entrance is where you want to kind of move, so you have to get 
through 25 to get to 30. Um, and that is, after entering the battle, the first active skill used grants the fighter 8% damage bonus and damage reduction for 15 seconds. Now, believe it or not, 15 seconds is quite a bit of time. Um, that could be a make or break situation for your first combo and how far the fight will go. And that actually amount will increase uh, pretty substantially up to 12.5%. So not only does it help you do more damage, but also reduces your damage. So if you're a little slower, you can also survive. If you're faster, you'll do a lot more damage. And it's nothing to scoff at, guys. That's a pretty big percent anyway. So I would get this to 30 if you have MH Ken, for example. Uh, to do it for B Zangief, I wouldn't do it. B Zangief doesn't need it. Blanca, I mean, yeah, I could use it, but not the end of the world. But right now, the only unit really it's worth doing is MH Ken. If you don't have MH Ken, I wouldn't push this anything past 25. All right, now tanks. This is the one that has the lowest amount on, but I got to work on. But I'm waiting for again Akuma to come out. Uh, the reason why this is a, a really important one to eventually get up is when you get to uh, stage 36, eventually, right? A lot of free-to-play players are nowhere near there and won't be there for a while. But eventually, when you get there, uh, and for PvP, to be quite honest, these tanks are going to be very, very viable and useful. Um, we'll do team building composition videos shortly, but I, I will soon. But I, I wanted to talk about this first. So. Strengthening all tank fighters. This is called fearless. Let's go through the list. Uh, the first one is no turning back. When HP drops below 25% for the first time, restores 9% of max HP. I mean, the the heal is not bad. Um, it's it's just it's just a one-time heal though, right? So that's why I was hesitant to go any further with this one. It's not the greatest. Uh, the second skill, on the other hand, is not bad. Blood Echo, when receiving damage, deals e damage equal to 4% of the fighter's max HP back to the target. Happens every 8 seconds. Someone like E. Honda, for example, this is an absolute must because he has Desperation, and Desperation does all immunity to all damage, and it pops pretty damn frequently. So E. Honda's a nightmare to deal with, and that extra little bit of damage that he bounces back to the opponent is very useful, to be quite honest, um, especially based on the fact that he has so much HP anyways, right? Uh, okay, going back to this one here. Uh, then, so, sorry, this one I just want to point out though is that the uh, the damage going back is based on of the fighter's max HP to the attacker, so it's based on your max HP. Okay, um, this one here, immovable. When losing 30% of HP, uh, cumulatively increases parry by 20%. Now, if you don't know what parry is, it's kind of like block. So you don't completely dodge the entire move. So dodge is completely different. The dodge is a complete like. You, you move out of the way. Parry is you kind of block a, a bit of the damage that comes in, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, and parry will increase here as you go through up to 30%. So not a bad amount, actually. 30% is pretty high, and, and that happens for five seconds. But again, I believe it only counts, I believe it only counts one time. So this one I haven't really worked on. And again, you're not really needing a tank in this game unless you're doing uh, showdown PvP, which I'll cover teams on shortly. Uh, and if you're doing like content past 36, because for the most part, Bison will do all your tanking for you, and he's a power unit, right? Or B Zangief will be your tank, even though he, he's a little squishy, or MH Ken will be your tank, which will do most of the work, anyways. For anyone who's using E Honda and stuff, uh, amazing. I would, I would focus on this a little bit more just to increase the stats, but the moves themselves aren't really the greatest. So uh, guys, I hope this kind of helped you out. That's the review. So just to recap again here, um, this is affected by your, your ranking up of your units, uh, your fighting heart. These here, I would focus on strictly the power, the Conqueror fighting heart, the fighting heart Har harmonious. If you have MH Ken, definitely the assassin one for vicious because that's your damage dealers. Support, I would get to 25 and stop. And it's up to you on tanks. If you're hell bent on using your tanks, I don't think they're really that necessary just yet. Uh, you can go further here, but I think this is the last one. Again, these are my opinion, guys. If you have any comments or questions, please shoot them in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, if you guys have any concerns, obviously voice them, and I'll be more than happy to address them. All right, guys, this is Payne. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful night, everybody, and we'll talk soon.